Good morning, Spartans. Welcome back. Happy Monday, April 15th. As I explained last week, uh, I am not in the building today, Tuesday, or Wednesday the 17th. I'll be back on Thursday. Uh, in the meantime, I'm in Phoenix with the boys' golf team. So there will be no Zoom meeting today. There will be no Zoom meeting Wednesday. But again, you are required to check in with me once a week. So you can wait for the Zoom on Friday this week or send me an email between now and the end of the week. Even though I'm out of the building, should you have any questions, again, please feel free to send me an email. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, Phoenix is two hours behind Minneapolis, so um, my emails may be coming a little bit later than usual. Um, it's all going to be dependent on what time I get up in the morning and what time we get back from the golf course. Uh, but there will be a, a bit of a delay. Uh, we are talking about, we're going to review your perspectives analysis uh, that you had from watching the movie Selma. Uh, and after we're done going through that, you have your unit one review questions to answer. That'll be due Wednesday. And I'll roll through them again. Uh, the answers, make sure we're on the same page. This class is a little bit difficult because we don't actually communicate with one another personally. Uh, before on Wednesday, we begin our unit one project. Again, there will not be a test for this unit. Let's get down to it. So you're supposed to watch the movie last week and over the weekend, get it finished today, and then analyze the societal change that occurred from two of the three perspectives. Now, the easiest two perspectives to analyze the societal change shown in the movie is probably conflict and functionalism. So we'll start with those. And again, just because you don't have exactly what I have doesn't mean it's wrong. It could very much be that you analyze a different component of society or a different view of society than I did. Well, let's start with functionalism and functional integration. Again, functionalism focuses on, is based on the changes to the components of society that are essential for a society functioning, performing, existing efficiently and consistently. Why the United States society or why any society exists with efficiency and um, consistency is because, I mean, regardless of where you go, we all have similar things. We all have a family dynamic and families will look somewhat similar between one culture and another. We have similar governmental institutions in some way or another, similar laws, similar beliefs, similar education systems, like all of these components of society, family, government, laws, school, religion, serve a purpose. And that purpose is that we all have the same understanding. We all have a similar idea of what is supposed to happen in society for consistency, for efficiency. If we're all doing our own thing, we're not very efficient. And if we're all doing our own thing, then we're, we're, there is no consistency whatsoever. So these, these components of society serve a purpose. They, they allow our society to function with efficiency and consistency. The movie begins loosely talking about a change to a law, a new law. And that law would be the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which more or less says that you have to treat people equally. And because we already had constitutional amendments that said you had to treat people equally, what this law changes is that because Southern states weren't treating black people equally with white people, it allowed the federal government to ensure that people were treating each other equally. So we could simply begin this analysis for functional, for, from the functionalism perspective, by writing down that the law changed. Civil Rights Act of 1964 was a new law that allowed the federal government to ensure black Americans are being treated equally as white Americans in the South. Or perhaps you mentioned Brown versus the Board of Education 1954, which said you can't segregate races uh, solely based on their skin color. Again, it's a change to a law. A law is part of government. Government is a function of society that serves a purpose, operating efficiently and consistently. Those are the apparent uh, examples from the video that I found. Again, you might have something a little bit different that doesn't necessarily make it wrong. Make it wrong. Perhaps 
perhaps you wrote down that people's mindsets, people's beliefs started to change. People's values started to change. While that would probably be better off in culture, values do serve a purpose because our values are undoubtedly coming from our schools or our religion. So it's not necessarily wrong, not necessarily right, but not necessarily wrong. There's vagueness in this. There's vagueness in studying people. We are not machines. We are all not going to have the same idea. Doesn't mean it's wrong. So with the changing of the law, then we can go to culture. And again, our norms, our values, our beliefs. If the laws are changing, that means people's beliefs are going to change. That means people's values are going to change. Perhaps you have written down here that our culture is that for culture, you wrote down that people started to see minorities as being equal with whites. Fantastic. Or perhaps you took it from a more conf confrontational standpoint and you talked about people started to value speaking up and standing out and drawing attention to inequality in our society also would have been correct for power. I think when it comes to the civil rights movement, we all understand the power dynamic here. For a very long time, white and specifically white men were group A and everybody else was group B. And in this particular case, it'd be black Americans were group B. This started to change. Black people were starting to gain an equal footing in regards to power with white Americans, which then brings us to the social structure. If white American uh, men or white Americans were not as powerful as they used to be and blacks were gaining power, that means blacks are moving up the social structure, all right? I don't necessarily know if you wanna write that whites are moving down the social structure. I don't know if they lost any standing, but I think we should be able to realize that blacks moved up uh, to at least an equitable footing with white Americans. And then we go down to social action. Very well laid out in the movie. I mean, there's protests, there's lobbying politicians, there's demonstrations. Uh, there is this uh, consistency of the black protesters being beaten and realizing that if they fought back, that they would lose their, lose their position of uh, being able to draw sympathy for white Amer from white Americans to support, to gain the necessary support to drive the rest of this sociological change. Or perhaps you wrote down here for social action, people started feeling bad or guilty about what was happening to Black Americans in the South. And even if they weren't in the South, they could no longer just sit and watch on TV these people being beaten. While you could... Well, we just did analyze the societal change because a law changed, a function of society changed. We could also analyze this societal change from a conflict perspective, meaning that conflict begins with power. Black Americans were not accepting of being powerless or less powerful than whites. So because they wanted more power, the social structure changed. And again, Blacks would at the very least move up the social structure. You could make the argument that whites move down the social structure. Or perhaps you analyze the conflict from a completely different vantage point and said that the white Southern governments lost power and the Northern progressive governments gained power. Both would be correct. Again, as we discussed last week, you're probably gonna see some similarities between what you wrote in one box and what you wrote in, in a different box. And again, we're trying to figure out what is causing the change. Was it because a law change or did the law change because black Americans in this example weren't down with being second-class citizens? If power changes, we know that structures, uh, social structure is changing. Again, blacks would at the very least move up and social action. Protests, demonstrations, um, gaining people's sympathy, allowing the demonstrators, allowing themselves to be hurt and filmed publicly for the evening news to be broadcast around the country and the world, being absolutely hammered by law enforcement officers to gain the sympathy of white people. And what did that action lead to? A change in the law. 
In the, in the video, they talked about signing the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which is exactly what Oprah Winfrey was trying to do at the beginning of the film. She was trying to register to vote because a function of our society changed, culture changed, our beliefs, our values, and our norms. It became normalized that Black Americans voted. It became normalized that Black Americans had equal rights with whites. Equality, voting, all of these things became valued in our society. Perfect example. Symbolic interaction, that might be the difficult one, probably the most vague of all. Again, symbolic interaction begins with social action. Perhaps you, your, full, your social action um, focused on the demonstrations and people's responses, the reaction to the protests and the beatings. Perhaps you were, your social action began with um, people's reaction to the Edmund Pettus Bridge or the Confederate flag or segregation in itself is a symbol of oppression. All of these things would have been accurate. But because people reacted how they did to, again, the protests, segregation, um, the beatings that people took, we go back to functional integration. What did the social action lead to? Social action led to a change in the law. Could have written down Civil Rights Act of 64, Voting Rights Act of 1965, which again is going to change our culture, a value and a belief and an stressed importance on equitability. Voting, equal rights, all would have been equal. How does this affect power? Well, whites were no longer the superior. Whites were no longer the ones who controlled everything, at least in the South. Blacks gained power. And if blacks are gaining power, that means the social structure is changing. Blacks are moving up at least to an equal place with whites. Or perhaps he could have even said that whites moved down. Perhaps they were so ashamed of how the rest of the country viewed them, they kept their mouth shut and tried to avoid any sort of conflict or any sort of additional negative press because they didn't want to lose any more powers. Maybe they dropped down a little bit underneath blacks. It all depends on your opinion. And a lot of this is opinion. A lot of this is interpretation. So again, you're not going to have the exact same thing as I do. That's fine. Uh, make sure this gets submitted and I'll review this when I get back. And again, uh, if something is glaringly wrong, I can reach out. Uh, but my guess is most of us are probably in the ballpark of where we need to be. So that should get turned in. What you're working on the rest of the day and should be done by Wednesday uh, are the review questions. And again, these are kind of the summative questions here. Drawing in the different things we've been talking about for a couple of weeks, try to get, a, try to get our heads in the right spot before we do our final project uh, so we're all on the same page. So some are questions, some are vocabulary terms, which I don't think will be very difficult for you. Uh, and then some, are, some of these questions are looking for key, key bits of information so we can, again, start this project on the right foot. The last few questions are more or less um, scenarios that you can respond to. And in these scenarios, I'm asking what you think, again, opinion-based, what you think would be the best way to analyze a societal change, um, either shown or described in the scenarios here. So if you could respond to these by Wednesday, that'd be fantastic. I'll roll through these on Wednesday, and then I'll explain our unit project that you have a week to complete. Again, no Zoom today, no Zoom Wednesday. If you have a question, shoot me an email this week. And I'll get back to you while I'm uh, on the road with the golf team. And I'll see you guys on Friday. So until then, uh, be well, stay safe, make good, good choices. I'll be a little bit more information posted on Wednesday. Um, when I'll explain the final project. But any questions in the meantime, shoot me an email. Go Spartans.